Hello everyone. Today we will discuss regarding the 8085 microprocessor. So let's start with. So regarding the processor system or architecture, uh, we will be going through the following points. The typical processor system consists of CPU that is central processing unit, then ALU arithmetic logic unit, control logic different registers memory and input output interfaces again interconnections between these all units are uh, done with the help of address bus data bus and control bus we will be going through these points one by one okay the 8085 cpu internal structure the internal architecture of 8085 CPU is capable of performing the following operations. It can store 8 bit data in registers or accumulator. It can perform the arithmetic and logic operations that is ALU. Then test for conditions like if then sequence of the execution of the instructions and store temporary data in RAM that is random access memory during execution. Now uh, we can see a small figure here for an in internal structure of a CPU of 8085 mu p. Uh, you can see here uh, different components like accumulator, flag flip-flops, then ALU, then instructions decoder, control unit, these are different registers like B, C, D, E, H, L. Uh, these are the registers and then stack pointers, program counters. And all are connected with different types of buses. So here you can see address bus, then data bus. This is internal data bus connecting the different internal components of the CPU. And then control signal that is from control bus. So these are different points again the arrowheads show the directions so these are bi-directional these are unidirectional we can say here so this is the structure of CPU of a mu p8085 then uh, in this diagram again the different resistors are again explained uh, in detail here you can see these are different resistors like accumulator A, then register B, C, D, E, H, L, then stack pointers and then program counters uh, connected with the data bus and address bus here. Again, uh, in the bracket it is written as 8. So, these are all 8-bit registers and stack pointer and program pointer, these are 16-bit registers. So, address bus which can be uh, which can handle 16 bit data here which is an unidirectional bus and data bus this is uh, 8 bit data can be handled with the data bus and these are bidirectional so you can read or write data or we can say uh, we can access as well as provide data uh, from this uh, data bus so this is the detailed structure of uh, resistors all the resistors shown here are 8 bit resistors only stack pointers and program counters are 16 bit uh, data okay so this was regarding the resistors of 8085 so again resistors are six general purpose 8 bit resistors that is b c d e h and l they can also be combined as a register pairs to perform 16 bit operations okay like bc d and hl we can combine uh, 8 bit 8 bit registers for the uh, 16 bit data registers are programmable data load or move etc then accumulator single 8 bit register that is part of alu uh, it is used for arithmetic and logic operations the result is always stored in the accumulator so for storing the results of arithmetic and logic operations the accumulator register is used then program counter uh, this is the register that is used to control the sequencing of the execution of instructions this register always holds the address of the next instruction since it holds an address it must be 16 bit wide okay 
so as it is having address of uh, instruction or uh, data uh, it is a 16 bit register then a stack pointer the stack pointer is also a 16 bit register that is used to point into memory the memory is register point uh, to it is a special area called as a stack the stack is an area of memory used to hold data that will be retrieved soon the stack is usually accessed in the uh, last in first out fashion lif that is last in first out fashion uh, now the different buses uh, the 8085 is an 8 bit general purpose microprocessor that can address 64 kilobytes of memory it has 40 pins and uses plus 5 volt uh, as a power supply Uh, it can uh, run at a maximum frequency of 3 MHz. The pins on the chip can be grouped into 6 groups. Address bus, data bus, control and status signals, power supply and frequency, externally initiated signals and serial input output ports. Okay, So this is the bus structure, 8-bit uh, 8085 CPU or MPU that is microprocessing unit communicates with the other units using a 16-bit address bus, an 8-bit data bus and a control bus. You can see here, so this is the CPU of a 8085, it can also be called as a MPU. So the address bus which is 16-bit is connected with the different internal components like memory, inputs, outputs uh, with, uh, with the help of address bus which is 16-bit that is from A0 to A15. Uh, these are 16 bits so that will be connected with the different components then the data bus again is of 8 bits that is from d0 to d7 so this is data bus which is again connected with different components of internal structure of 8085 and uh, control bus is also connected with the different components so basically these are the three different buses, uh, buses nothing but the connections between the different components for uh, different purposes. So data bus is a bi-directional bus, again address bus and control bus are unidirectional buses that also can be seen from the structure. The address and data buses, the address bus has eight signal lines, say eight uh, A8 to A15 which are unidirectional the other 8 address bits are multiplexed or time shared with the 8 data bits so the bits AD0 to AD7 are bidirectional and serve as A0 to A7 and D0 to D7 at the same time during the execution of the instruction these lines carry the address bits during the early part then during the latter part the of the execution they carry 8 data bits so in the early part it will be address data and la, uh, in the latter part it will be 8 bit data in order to separate the address from the data we can use a latch to save the value before the function of the bit changes okay and that can be seen later the control and status signals now, there are main for four uh, control and status signals these are ale that is address latch enable this signal is pulse that become one when AD0 to AD7 lines have an address on them, it becomes zero after that. This signal can be used to enable latch to save the address bits from the AD lines. RD that is read, which is active low, then WR that is write, then IO that is input output. Okay, this signal specifies whether operation is a memory operation or an input output operation that is IO or memory input or output or memory if IOM is 0 it is a memory operation and if IO is 1 it is an input output operation S0 and S1 status signals to specify the kind of operation being performed usually uh, it is unused in small systems frequency control signals there are three important pins in the frequency control group x0 and x1 are the inputs from the crystal or clock generating circuit 
the frequency is internally divided by 2. So to run the microprocessor at 3 megahertz, a clock running at 6 megahertz is used or it can be connected to uh, in between the x0 and x1 pins. Clock out, that is CLK out and output clock pin to drive the clock for the rest of the system. We will discuss rest of the control signals as we go on to the steps for fetching an instruction. Let us assume that we are trying to fetch the instruction at a memory location 2005. That means that the program counter is now set to the value. The following is the sequence of operations. The program counter places the address value on the address bus and the controller issues a read signal that RD, RD signal that is read. The memory's address decoder gets the value and determines which memory location is being accessed. The value in the memory location is placed in the, the data bus and the value on the data bus is read into instruction decoder inside the microprocessor. After decoding the instructions, the control unit issues the proper control signals to perform the operations. Timing signals for fetching the instructions. Now let us look at the exact timing of the sequence of the events as this is extremely important. Okay. Uh, at T1, uh, the high order 8 address bits, that is 20H, are placed on the address line 8, A8 to A15 and the low order bits are placed on AD7 to AD0. The ALE signal goes high to indicate that AD0 to AD8 are carrying an address. At exactly the same time, the IOM signal goes to low to indicate a memory operation. At the beginning of the T2 cycle, a low order 8 address bits are removed from 87 to 80 and the controller sends a RD signal that is read signal to the memory. The signal remains low active for 2 clock periods to allow for slow devices. During T2, memory places the data from the memory location on the lines 87 to 80. During T3, the RD signal is disabled that is goes high. This turns off the output tri-state that buffers in the memory. That makes the 87 to 80 lines to high impedance mode. Thank you.